to believe Alaska's Choose Respect campaign is almost 10 years old. How one community has tied the march to a dance festival. I think that these kinds of celebrations and coming together as a community is all about a healing process. It sets a higher bar for respect and loving and caring for each other in our communities. It means people are going to be safer. Ahead, hear from the governor who started this event when he believes Choose Respect marches on. Sponsorship for Frontiers with Rhonda McBride is provided by your local Alaska Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to Frontiers. As we look at one community's fight for change, Old Harbor on the southeast end of Kodiak Island recently held its seventh annual Choose Respect March. Surveys show that island-wide, about 2,000 women have experienced domestic violence or sexual assault in their lifetime, or about 45%. The women of Old Harbor are strong. They have to be, because many must manage on their own while their men are away at sea. So what's the common thread in all the names on all these boats? They're usually after daughters. So what does it say when men name their boats after their daughters? They love them, I guess. Yet fishermen like Al Craddy believe violence is an undercurrent. <laughs> There's a lot of alcohol in the village, and you, you, don't, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. I've seen, seen enough of it to where you can tell which people has really happened to, especially the girls, because their life leads on to something else. Growing up, Al Craddy says violence was tolerated. I was abused when I was a kid, I can admit it. Today, there are many signs Old Harbor is on the road to recovery. Be careful, Chris, okay? You're doing a good job. Here at the school, students work on signs of their own for this year's Choose Respect March. Who are you cutting that one for? Can you help? You go, okay? Wings to be fashioned out of cardboard. And then they have little handles on them. So kids can the grab onto them and fly free. So that we're going to all be birds together in unison, birds of a feather flock together kind of thing. Each dot represents family members from both the present and the past. All of the symbols come together to kind of make you who you are. There are so many generations of people that came before us and made us who we are. Fallon Nelson is the women's wellness coordinator for the Old Harbor Tribe. She believes culture is the best way to make a community whole. Oh, that looks so pretty. The march will be the kickoff to a big event. Kodiak Island's first regional dance festival to encourage young people to take pride in who they are. You're really feeling that this festival will be a turning point? Oh, for sure. Fallon Nelson just, says the community like, needs to set a good example. From just talking with some of the young ladies from 18 to 25, that it wasn't it wasn't seen as out of the norm for someone to lay their hands on somebody else. Fallon says Old Harbor has a housing shortage, so homes are crowded, and if there's violence, there's a good chance children will see it. We're in the 90th percentile for experiencing domestic violence, sexual assault, and sexual molestation as a child. So, I mean, that, those are huge statistics, and it's not that we have bad people here, but it's an example of generational and vicarious trauma. While traditional ways to cope or lost. And I'm gonna start the process. Are you ready? Here we go. The first tattoo to be done in this region for a long time. 
Allison Warden is an Inupiat who studies traditional tattoos meant to symbolize a woman's lineage or a rite of passage, like her first tattoo. It was so intensely spiritual that I was just crying because I could feel the ancestors around me. So for me, it was like a, a, a deepening of my commitment to, to being on the planet. By the light of a seal oil lamp, Melissa Burns' tattoo takes shape ancient Alutic symbols to remind her of her commitment to her culture and to the Choose Respect movement. For many in this community, they are one and the same. We are standing at the dawn of a new era and beginning of a new journey. Before the march, time out to talk about things that need to be talked about. Growing up here in Old Harbor, we didn't have these types of events. Events where experiences can be shared. If we want change, we cannot sit back and be silent or sweep things un under the rug. We must talk and reach out for resources because they are available. In my own life, I have been a victim of domestic violence and I've been a victim of sexual assault. There were times when I carried a lot of pain and anger inside of me. I remember the fire that came up inside of me when somebody was trying to take advantage of me. And I had to stand up and say no. And I said, don't you ever touch me like that or do anything like that again. Ooh. Allison Warden makes the sound of a seal bark Ooh. to remind kids to watch out for warning signs. My partner decided to squeeze my face really hard and say something really intense to me. And it was a very scary moment because it kind of defined me and what I was like, is this what I'm choosing for myself? The rain turned the bird wings into umbrellas, but protection just the same. As the community marched forward, it also looked back to its roots. During the dance festival that followed, an old song was shared. Ukuch Skunat, These Schooners, a song about the schooners that brought Russian fur traders to the island in the late 1700s. The Alutic men were taken away from their villages, from their families. Uh, they were basically indentured slaves. Uh, they, with their kayaks and their hunting tools, taken far away, uh, many as far south as California. Some never to return. The song speaks to the starvation ahead for the women and their children. The women call out, these schooners are making me cry. What am I going to do? Many believe the fallout from this trauma continues today. We have health issues, we have relationship issues, we are prone to substance abuse. That wasn't how we were. We were very productive, um, healthy families, uh, living off of the land. But Alicia Drabeck is hopeful. I watch the children that are growing up in this new cultural revitalization, and they don't remember a time where our schools didn't have celebrations like these. And because of that, they don't have their own personal trauma of feeling disconnected. They have a, a unified sense of identity. How's your tattoo coming? <laughs> I love it. It's a way of honoring my ancestors, and um, it's a symbol of protection and strength for me. A symbol more women sought out at the dance festival. Whether you have faced sexual abuse, alcohol abuse, um, child abuse, any domestic violence, don't let those things define who you are. Instead, to be defined by choices. And for Old Harbor, to choose culture as a compass is to choose respect.
Kids from all over our state took part in Governor Bill Walker's Choose Respect poster competition. Liliana Rivera, a fifth grader from Anchorage's Government Hill, took first place. Her poster incorporates this year's theme, Alaskans pulling together for each other. David Fisher, a seventh grader from Nepuskiak on the Kuskokwim River, was one of the runner-ups. And Jorenz Nobliza, a Barrow seventh grader, was also recognized, as well as Ambrosia Wood, a fifth grader from Glen Allen. In all, there were more than 200 entries. Up next, we talk with the governor who started it all. I was excited to, to see Alaskans still standing for Alaskans in this. Although Sean Parnell no longer is in office, why his Choose Respect campaign marches on. Spontaneity. How about this? Is back in season. Time to get busy. Need to stop? Nope. Get doing. Time for a new Prius. The 2017 Prius, 54 MPG, and Toyota Safety Sense. Reckless abandon without the reckless. Get yours today with these limited time savings. All right, where to next? The Toyota Spring Event is going on now. For details, see your Alaska Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. If your frozen puppy poops are starting to thaw, 337 Poops, the number to call. Call Alaska Pet and Yard Services today to find out about a free spring cleanup. 337 Poop is the number to call. We just wrapped up an incredible season for Alaskan skiers. We've had amazing snow, great racing, and other events that's really put the focus on the great talent blooming here in Alaska. And you know what? Next year's going to be even better as we get ready to host the U.S. Nationals and Olympic Trials here at Kincaid Park. The Nordic Ski Association has so much going on, but even with the incredible generosity and energy of the Nordic Ski Community of Alaska, these events don't happen on their own. The fact is, we wouldn't be able to get this done at a world-class level without a world-class sponsor like ConocoPhillips. In Bristol Bay, the seasons pass from one generation to the next. We hand down our traditions and our way of life. But for the first time in our memory, what the seasons ahead will bring is a question. Will the salmon always return to a place that's always been? If your frozen puppy poops are starting to thaw, 337 Poops, the number to call. Call Alaska Pet and Yard Services today to find out about a free spring cleanup. 337 Poop is the number to call. When Sean Parnell became governor, he did something unprecedented. He made Alaska's domestic violence and sexual assault problem one of his top priorities and hired cabinet-level staffers to focus exclusively on this issue. And early in his administration, he launched the Choose Respect campaign, born out of his own life experiences. Let's talk about your own family. Mm. Was there intergenerational trauma there? Uh, my father suffered both emotional and physical abuse at the hands of his father who was an alcoholic. Um, I know that my grandfather Parnell died effectively on Skid Row in downtown Seattle. So when were you aware that there was a problem with your grandfather? Um, probably late in my teen years, maybe early 20s. My grandfather on my father's side passed away when I was six or seven years old, but I did not understand why I had been kept from him by my parents, and they were, they were protecting me and protecting my brother. Does this influence the way that you view the world? Uh, is there any I, connection between oh yeah. that family experience and choose respect? Absolutely. I, I certainly think it played a role. Um, I think that me gaining an understanding of domestic violence um, in my family's history. And then a ride along I went on with Anchorage Police Department officers when I was 29 and 30, where I got to see house after house of domestic violence victims and survivors cowering in closets, meeting us in the driveway when they had called the police officer. What was the seed for Choose Respect itself, the slogan? You know, that's, a, that's an interesting question because as I look back, I was looking for a, a value or trait that would unite Alaskans, that we could, we could agree on as Alaskans. 
you have your Choose Respect campaign and then that National Guard uh, scandal. Yeah. In hindsight, do you have any insights to that? Well, so the, the National Guard scandal was clearly, um, you know, clearly tainted the record of Choose Respect, and I think um, inappropriately so. I think that narrative was costly in terms of, in terms of the election because that certainly played a role in it. At the same time, I know in my heart that I did everything possible that I could have to um, look out for those victims to get what they needed. So what do you think about Bill O'Reilly being let go from Fox over allegations of, of misconduct, sexual harassment? Well, look, sexual harassment has no place in any, in any context and in any way. Do you have any thoughts about just kind of the general climate in our country from Bill O'Reilly to President Trump being under a cloud for past allegations? I guess the question really is, are we going to value each other as people? And are we going to count our neighbor as valuable, um, just as human beings? And that, that is something that um, requires a heart change. I followed this issue for a long time, mm -hmm. decades, yeah. I would say. And I remember when I first started covering it, it was very hard to find victims of sexual assault mm -hmm. to talk about it. Very, very hard. Yeah. And at this Old Harbor rally, there were people that disclosed they were sexually assaulted. Yeah. People in the community that are prominent That never would have, have happened disclosed. 20 years ago, yeah. So what does that say? I think it's huge. I know when I see somebody um, get the courage to stand up and speak about what's happened to them, that my heart goes out to them in the sense that I am so proud of them that they have stepped past the self-imposed shame, the self-imposed guilt, which should not be there, but is. It's very real to them. Um, but for them to courageously step forward like that is huge. And it means that more can step forward and get the help they need and, and the healing that, that comes from that too. Ahead, the effectiveness of the Choose Respect campaign. Do rallies and marches make a difference? Some hard numbers when we come back. I just want cremation. No hidden costs, no add-ons. Cremation is much more affordable. Dignified, ecological. I just want something basic. The simpler, the better. Cremation sure makes a lot of sense. The Cremation Society of Alaska is now serving families in Anchorage and in the Valley. And we are always on the web at alaskacremation.com. Call us today at 277-2777 or in the Valley, 373-8627. Hungry? Dami, Japanese restaurant. Wow. Special. Look at those rolls. Sashimi. Dami. My knee problem started years ago. So when I talked to Dr. Vermillion about Swift Path, it was something that possibly could lead to a much quicker recovery. And it was so much better than I even anticipated. I was back on my feet the day of the surgery. Within weeks, I was so much better off than I had been before. Contact Dr. Vermillion and the experts at Orca to learn more about the Swift Path technique and its excellent success rate. Call 644-6055 or visit orcaak.com. Hungry? Dami, Japanese restaurant. Wow. Sashimi. Dami. At ANTHC, we're providing holistic care for the complete health of our people. Our ongoing investment in cutting-edge technology means that a patient can be seen, diagnosed, and treated faster. It means communities can track and respond to changes in their environment. It means our energy is more affordable, our water is cleaner, and our people are healthier. We're working in partnership towards our vision that Alaska Native people are the healthiest people in the world. Alaska's numbers on domestic violence and sexual assault are some of the highest in the nation. A University of Alaska Justice Center study shows that 40 out of every 100 adult women have experienced intimate 
partner violence in their lifetime, while 33 have been sexually assaulted. About 50 of those women have experienced one or both forms of violence. Well, those numbers have improved since the Choose Respect campaign began. Is there a connection? Joining us to talk about that, Andre Rose with the University of Alaska Justice Center and Doug Modig, a traditional healing healer and also a native sobriety leader. Now let's uh, go to some of these numbers and, and talk about them so people can get an overview of the issue. You know, this victimization survey was done between the space of 10 years. It didn't really change all that much, really, 10 years. It's, uh, we've made some small and meaningful changes, though. Uh, the, the numbers are definitely headed in the right direction. Uh, if we look at the past year prevalence estimates, they've dropped by about 30 percent. But you're absolutely right. We still have a very, very long way to go. The numbers are still completely unacceptable. But we are headed in the right direction. That's the good news uh, that we have. So is there any research that shows whether or not campaigns like Choose Respect make a difference? Not specifically, uh, but I do believe that it makes a difference in part because it increases our awareness and our understanding of the problems that are occurring here in our state. And acknowledging that there is a problem I think is critically important. Well, Doug, you have done outreach to communities for years through uh, Rural Caps Rural Providers Conference, which goes to communities every year to focus on issues like sobriety, domestic violence, sexual assault. Do you feel that, that this kind of community awareness makes a difference? <clears throat> well, it certainly is making an impact. The, I know that um, our, our drive to, to promote focus on sobriety, focus on wellness, isn't driven by research. It's driven by our own experience in the communities. Well, at the Rural Providers Conference, you know, you've heard a lot of stories over the years, over the decades. What do you distill from what you've heard at these conferences, like the one that, that's been held in Nome for the last two years? Well, that the issues that we're experiencing have been going on a long time. And part of it, I think, comes from our uh, initial socialization with, um, with the um, Russians and ultimately with the Europeans that um, we get the, um, the dregs of uh, society uh, coming over to um, exploit the land for the, for the resources. And then ultimately, they, um, and having completed their task, they, they leave. And uh, many times those folks are, you know, just, they just don't behave very well. Well, we see the same um, sort of process continuing now that, um, that most of the people that are victimized um, in Alaska are happen to be Alaska Native women, and um, they're not, um, you know, the finest of society. They're, they're people that, um, that have been socialized to behave badly. Of course, that's a thought. There's no, uh, there's no specific resource to do that, although when we look at um, studies like the epigenetic studies, the uh, ACEs study, we see that there's a uh, direct relationship, if not a ca causal relationship, between the high numbers of statistics related to negative social indicators and what we experience in this society. Right, and, and maybe we should explain to the audience epigenetics is some research going that, that trauma is passed on, some actual physical evidence, and ACEs is a, a program that looks at the things that will make a child strong, and if those things are missing, they'll have problems. So I guess the question is, why are our rates so high? Does the research tell us that? It tells us it's bad. Unfortunately, it does not quite yet. Uh, what we do know is, unfortunately, violence impacts everyone uh, throughout Alaska. We've done annual surveys since 2010. We have now talked to more than 10,000 women about their experiences with sexual violence and intimate partner violence, and we have found unacceptably high rates throughout Alaska. In all regions of Alaska, we have seen unacceptable rates. Now, your survey has focused on women. What about men? We know that, that there are a lot of male victims of violence and sexual assault. Absolutely. Our, our survey has not focused on men, but using national surveys, when we look at violence against American Indian and Alaska Native people, we find that the rates of violence against men 
are the same as the rates of violence against women. Both of them are unacceptably high. The types of violence are a little bit different. Women are more likely to experience sexual violence. They're more likely to experience stalking. But overall, the rates are about the same for both men and women. So what about the Choose Respect campaign? Do you think that things like this do make a difference? I, yeah, when, social, when society says we need to be more respectful, I think it um, translates into uh, uh, better behavior, people uh, behaving better. At the same time, we get a mixed message in this country about how we're, uh, about the whole notion of respect. And so it really is up to us, you know, at the individual level to, uh, uh, to make our preferences known because societally we tolerate quite a lot of bad behavior. Andre? And I think it was very important for Governor Parnell to make it a key priority uh, and to set a standard in the state of Alaska that we would choose respect in our relationships and in our homes and in our businesses. Uh, that was very, very important. It set the tone for a new path uh, for the state of Alaska. And five, six years later, we've seen some pretty significant drops. Uh, the question now, I think, is going to be whether we can continue on that path and whether we can continue to address these problems in our community. Well, that was one thing that Sean Parnell talked with us about as well, uh, not in the interview, but um, that he worries about, you know, how things will take shape with our, 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 our tight funding fiscal right. crisis, and that he said that the campaign was more than a campaign, that there were pillars to it, more law enforcement, more social services, or at least coordinating them better. Well, certainly with the budget crisis that we have today, I think all of us are very concerned about our ability to sustain our efforts to both prevent and to respond to domestic violence and to sexual violence in our state. That's a real concern. Doug, do you have concerns about the resources that are there to help people? Well, you know, I think about it in a different way, perhaps. I don't believe that we can legislate good behavior. I think that uh, it has to be a, a real change in heart. I don't know that our politicians, you know, can uh, change the behavior of a society. I mean, they like to think that they can, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. Do you think talking about it amongst ourselves at the grassroots level makes a difference? It seems to make more of a difference, especially, uh, I mean, you know, think about it. You know, the, uh, the impact that we have on our children happens because we talk to them. And uh, not because somebody at a higher level talks to them, but because we do as parents, as, uh, as uncles and aunties, because we do as people. Well, the Rural Providers Conference is one place where people get together and talk about a lot of big issues. Now, if people want to get involved with that, it's uh, in uh, Tanacross this year. Mm -hmm. how, how do you get plugged into that? Well, you simply show up. And um, you talk to uh, my wife at, that works over at RoCap. Uh, Amy Modig. Amy Modig. You can talk to me, and, and uh, you know, certainly I'll, and that information will be provided. All right. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us. Too thank brief you, of a discussion, but good to have it. Andre Rose and Doug Modig. And for now, we leave you with the Kodiak Alutic Dancers schooner song, remembered and taught by Mary Jane Peterson and Jenny Zeter of Akiak. We'll see you next week. Thank you.